Hi everyone, this is AppChasers.com. You know, I've had a lot of people ask me the question, what is iCloud? Well, we're going to take a few minutes here in this video to explain all the ins and outs of Apple's iCloud service and how you can take advantage of it. For years, people wanted Apple to release a product similar to Dropbox. You've probably heard of Dropbox, and what it is is it's a service that syncs all of your documents across all of your devices. So whether it's on an iPhone, iPad, or your computer, you'll have the same documents synced throughout those devices so that any changes that take place on one device trickle down to the others. Now it took a while for Apple to get all the puzzle pieces in place, but it finally has a service that can do all of that, and it's called iCloud. Yet iCloud can be a little bit confusing because there are a number of different services within this one iCloud canopy. But let's get right into it and we'll show you what iCloud can do and why you want to use it. To begin, let's go into our settings app here on the iPad. Now this would be in the same place on your iPhone if you're using that to follow along. So here we are in the settings app. You're probably familiar with this, but uh, it controls all the settings here on the iPad and the iPhone. But if we scroll down, we see one called iCloud. Now that's the settings tab that we're going to be exploring here today. So here we have all of the different features and settings of iCloud, and we'll go through these one by one. The first one here is called Family Sharing. Now what that does is it allows a number of different iTunes accounts to be linked together with one credit card so that they can share purchases across devices. So for example, if you have uh, one iTunes account that you've made your purchases on and you'd like to share those apps and maybe songs with your spouse, you can link your iTunes accounts together and as long as they have one shared credit card, they can download these same apps free of charge if one of the accounts has bought them already. Now my wife and I share a single iTunes account so that we can share all of our app purchases across all of our devices and we don't have to worry about the confusion of family sharing. The next tab here is how much storage you have available in iCloud. I'm just going to tap on that here and you'll notice that I have in my account 200 gigabytes of iCloud storage. Now that's the entire amount of space that I have available to save documents to, photos to, to back up my iPhone and iPad, and to collect various other data. Now I've purchased this storage space. Off the bat, Apple gives everyone five gigabytes, but you can purchase more space if you need it, and that's by going into the Change Storage Plan button here. So we'll toggle that, and you'll see the different tiers of data that are available. So we've got 200 gigabytes for $399 a month, 500 for $999, and then it goes up from there. So if you do need more space, you can uh, purchase that right here within the Manage Storage uh, button. And we can also see under total storage how much storage I have still available. So it's showing 178 gigabytes free for me. Now if you're ever seeing a not enough storage space or iCloud error popping up on your device, you want to go into manage storage here. This is where you can toggle on and off the apps that are going to take up space in your iCloud storage capacity. All right, so here we are. This breaks it down by how much each device on my account is using. It also shows how much each app is using. So you'll notice here that, uh, of course, my iCloud photo library is taking up the most amount of space. But I can also see my other device backups and how much space they're taking up. So we can go into each one of these and uh, just take a look at more of information about that and how much the backup is actually taking up in iCloud. Now, the cool thing is where it says uh, this iPad, this is the device that I'm actually using right now and how much storage is taking up. So you can change and edit how much space is being consumed here by your backup. So for example, I've turned off photo library. So I don't need that included in my backup because I'm using the iCloud photo library. So I don't need this in my backup. 
You can also toggle on and off other apps and how they use their iCloud space. So that's how you can slim down how much space your backup is going to take up. So first and foremost, I recommend turning off the photo library. That's going to take up the most of your storage. Okay, so now I'm going to back out of storage here. We'll get back to our main iCloud page. Now the next section here under iCloud on uh, our settings app is showing iCloud Drive and Photos. Now those are some pretty comprehensive features of iCloud. So we're going to save those for a couple more videos that you can look for on our channel page on YouTube. But let's skip down to Mail, Contacts, Calendars, Reminders, Safari, and Notes. Those are all different features of iCloud and uh, they're different services that you can sync across your devices. So for example, if you use iCloud for mail, you can uh, have the same email show up on your different devices. The same with contacts. Uh, you can sync your calendars across devices. Your reminders that you create on one device can be synced across. And then Safari is nice too because it will sync across your browsing history, your bookmarks, and your reading list uh, across your different iPhones and iPads, as well as your Mac computer. Now Notes is another one. If you use the Notes app on your iPhone, all of your notes will be synced across to your iPad if you have both of those settings turned on. Now we get to the backup section here underneath Notes, and this is an essential feature of iCloud that I recommend you turn on first and foremost. What iCloud Backup does is it basically creates a clone of your iPhone or your iPad uh, with all the apps that are on it, the settings, all the different tweaks that you've made to make that device yours personally. Uh, it clones that up into iCloud so that if your iPhone or iPad ever breaks, ever gets lost, or is ever stolen, all of that information, basically that clone, can be restored to your new device and it'll be exactly like the one uh, that you're replacing. So that's a great option that iCloud provides that you'll want to make sure you turn on. And usually uh, iCloud makes a backup every night for you. Now I'm going to go back out to our main uh, iCloud settings tab here. And the other one that we have is our keychain. Now that's going to allow you to save your passwords, your login information from different websites across your devices. So that's another nice one, very convenient to use here to make sure uh, all of your passwords and logins are saved. The last one that we're going to go over in this video is Find My iPad. This is a cool feature that I really want to make sure you turn on. And what that means is anytime uh, maybe you misplace your iPhone or your iPad, you, you leave it behind somewhere, Find My iPad or Find My iPhone is going to make sure that you can locate that device from one of your other devices. So if this toggle is on and you lose your iPad, let's say, you can use your iPhone and the Find My iPhone app that you can download from the App Store to locate where your iPad is. So you want to make sure that that's turned on. So that wraps up this video of the general overview of iCloud and how it works. Now the next video is going to show you iCloud Drive. And then we're going to have one too that shows you photos in iCloud. So make sure you stay tuned for those on AppChasers.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here.